Today I'm going to be discussing generators. So what generators are, are they are maps created inside of Substance for use inside of Substance. That's your ambient occlusion maps, your normal maps, and things like that. So to create these, uh, these maps, so if I come up here, I already baked these out, but I'm going to rebake them just to show you the process. Here's a normal map, world space normal, ID, uh, ambient occlusion map. This one is the most important for when you're uh, hand painting a texture. It saves you a bunch of time. And curvature map, here's another good one. This one captures all of your rim data. So it shows this edge, this edge, these inner edges. It captures all your edge data is what it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to here over on this panel. I'm going to click on texture settings. I'm going to scroll down. I have all these maps already made, but I'm going to delete them. And you see when I delete them, it removes the effect because it needs a map in order for the effect to work. So I'm going to hit bake mesh maps. By default, this is turned off. <clears throat> so use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. That means it's going to use this object as the high poly object so that it can bake the maps. Now I'm working on a 1024 map, but I want more detail within these particular maps. So I'm just going to go up to 2048. Uh, I'm going to play I'm not going to touch any of the settings because I'm going to, I want to see how they turn out. So I'm going to go to my ambient occlusion. Uh, let's turn down the occluder distance just a little bit because I remember I was looking in there and I remember seeing all this noise in here and I kind of want to turn that down a bit. So curvature, uh, Let's bump up the sampling radius just a bit. Okay. And when we're done with this, all we're going to do is hit Bake Selected Textures, and it's going to bake all these maps. There we go. That ambient occlusion looks a little better. And it's going to bake for how many materials that I have. It's going to bake a map for every single one. So this can take some time depending on how many objects or how many materials you're working with inside of Substance Painter. So now you see that I had, I baked my ambient occlusion maps. I already had this all set up. So what it did is it just took the ambient occlusion map and put it back in here. So if I come over here, I go to wood. This is my ambient occlusion. If I click on this, I already had one in there, so all it did was it reapplied my uh, ambient occlusion map and my world space normals and my uh, position gradient. So now I'm going to show you how to create one of these, one of these layers. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to just click on wood and I'm going to hit fill. Well, that didn't work. So I'm going to put the fill layer inside the wood. That way it's completely masked out. And I'm going to change this color to red. That way you all can see what it's doing. So I'm then going to add a black mask. I'm going to right click on the mask. Make sure you have the mask selected. Right click on it. Go to add generator and then select your generator. Now here is all of the generators that you can get. I, I can have drippings, dirt, curvature, ambient occlusion, fiberglass. You can have all of these, uh, these uh, procedural generators. So now I'm just going to click the ambient occlusion. The curvature, if I clicked on curvature, what it would do is it would, it would capture this line data here and it would use that instead. Although, because this has no... <clears throat> so, curvature is anything that's convex, 
And ambient occlusion is anything that is concave. So I'm not going to use the curvature map. Uh, oh, I'm not going to use a curvature generator. I'm going to use the ambient occlusion. And as you can see, it just opened it back up. But that's because I have to hit global invert and invert it. So now it's using the, <clears throat> the proper settings. So if I play with the global blur, I can soften this thing out. And global affects your entire, like the entire map. Uh, or the entire, it works within the, um, the world's, I want to say it's the world space normals map. I'm not entirely sure. But all I know is that get the ambient occlusion that it works in is entirely on this map alone. So this is where I can get most of my work done. So I can bump up the contrast, get rid of some of that noise, make it hug the edges a little bit more. I'd say right about there's pretty good. Uh, bump up the blur just a bit. Play with the balance. Let's bring it closer to the edges. Okay. Yeah, I could also invert it here. Global invert works well enough. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... And say I don't like the red, I can always come up to my fill layer. First, I'm going to turn off the materials settings. I'm going to turn off the height, the roughness, the metalness, and the normalness, normal mat, because I, I only want this to affect my color. When you're working with ambient occlusion, it only affects your color, or it should. With this, I'm going to change this color to a dark green. See how that looks. I'm going to click on the ambient occlusion generator. I'll play with it a little bit more. And there we go. I'm going to say that's good. Uh, what you can now do is you can come up here again. Say you didn't like where it was putting the mask. You could come up here and you can add a paint layer and working in white. I can decide where I want the ambient occlusion or this to be masked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on symmetry. And I'm going to fix this because I want a little bit more to show up along here. And along here. There we go. That looks a little, a little better. And I can still come over here and, oops, yeah, can still come over here and change the color to something a little more, less dark. I could also change this to an overlay. There we go. So I changed the layer setting to overlay. That way it doesn't look so, so dark. So now I'm going to come back to over here to my paint and I'm going to just keep painting where I want this color to be. All right, say that's good. Looks all right. Oh, another thing is, say you didn't like what the mask was doing, all you have to do is come down here, hit this, it'll go immediately to black, and you can adjust the mask that the, uh, that the generator put out. Good enough. 
Yeah, I'm going to say that's good enough. So that's basics for generators. Uh, you can come over here. I could right click on this and I can, all of these affect your generator. So I can add a filter and I could say, um, let's do a, not a bevel. Let's do a, uh, uh, let's see, what's a good one? Do an invert. So I can invert it. All this does is this affects the mask. And also layer order is kind of important. So if I put this under the paint layer, if I put this on the bottom, it'll only affect those beneath it. So I could have put the paint underneath this one to affect this mat, and it would only affect this mask. So all of these are affecting this mask. And all of these are affecting what's each thing that's beneath the other. So this is affecting this directly. This is affecting this, which is affecting this. And this is affecting this and this, which is affecting this. So I'm just going to delete that one because I didn't like the effect. But there's a whole bunch of other effects that you can add. You can add a fill, add levels. So with levels, I can control. It's just like levels in Photoshop. I can control the how much black and white is within that mask. But it's kind of like working in the contrast. It's kind of like working with the balance and contrast in here. But if you put levels up here, it'll affect your paint and ambient occlusion. If I just put it here, it'll just affect this one. So I'm going to delete that one. So yeah, that's the basics of generators.